Hey everybody, how's it going? Happy Sunday. Peter here with Forte Trader. Thanks for uh, watching this video. This is an inner circle video. This is only for this small group that we currently have here inside of our Facebook group. Um, I, I, this is long in the making. I should have been making these a long time ago, but um, definitely going to be our first, but not our last. And so there's importance to each one of these things that I'm going to do. I'm going to just kind of make them um, sporadically as I see a need for a specific topic to be spoken about or questions asked and such. This first one is going to be recorded, uh, but I'll be looking forward to doing live ones as I see more activity in the group. With that said, one of the main key things today is wanting to see more activity out of you guys. Um, first and foremost, I appreciate the business. It means a lot to me. Thank you very much. My wife too. We're thankful people. But at the same time too, the whole goal is I want to see everybody benefit from this. So I can't know if anyone's benefiting if I can't reach out and help people or I can't get some kind of result. So I'm really looking forward to getting some contact out of you guys, seeing some action in the next few weeks or so, in the next coming months. We're going to have some good trade activity coming up soon here. We're past the holidays and again, I hope everyone had a good one. Good New Year's and all that stuff and everybody's alive and kicking and ready to go. Um, but so what I'm going to do is eventually here in a few minutes, I'm going to take myself off the screen. We're going to go into the computer screen. I'm going to show some key things I want to talk about here is again, I, I know initially our videos was all about just diving in. It started off a little bit slow and then started diving in and just had to like simply use a scanner called season algo, look for opportunities in fundamental. They kind of use a, a technical approach behind the fundamental um, history right on on futures and commodity spread opportunities then we go in and we were using um, Daniel's trading which uses a, a white label platform from um, OEC trader it's pretty widely known for professional traders institutes it looks boring it looks vague I'm gonna redo all that because now we're using TradeStation um, we're using futures plus which is a web-based trading platform from a really high-end more state-of-the-art algorithmic company called uh, trading Technologies. so they've kind of helped them on that end i was working with them answering questions a lot for them the beginning of last year since january of 2019 and so they tried one thing it didn't work and they brought in trading technologies i'm um, kind of like basically their non-paid beta tester in this whole process so we've had some pretty interesting experiences um, but and little stuff that had, had to get fixed and they've been doing it along the way um, so, but this is the key things that I want to dive back into today is I want to go into the charts. I want to go into season algo. I want to explain how um, we're going to be able to like be a little bit open-minded and scan and play around with uh, a particular commodity. We're going to go into a technical charts, which I use a whole complete different platform. And there's one I'm experimenting on right now um, that I like called Trading View. Okay, so. You don't have to be, just real quick note, tied to platform of your broker. Remember that. Some of us get too tied with that. We try to integrate all of our resources into our trading business into the resources that our broker provides us. They, but their platform might suck as far as charting. It might just be really good to put in an order there, especially with these seasonal platforms. You know, they, they look ugly, they look old school, but we're using data from somewhere else anyway. You can use charting from somewhere else too. So keep an open mind about that. Sometimes there could be a little bit more cost to your business, but your tools, your your having the better tools to your business is going to only help you make more money. If you know what I mean, it's still at the end of the day, not a super big cost, but yes, you're adding a little bit more to the cost. You might pay somebody for data where that guy was giving you free data. This guy you're paying, but you're getting a better tool that you can visually touch and feel better. It works for you and your personality. And so, if it makes you more money, your expense goes up a little bit, but it's your cost of doing business. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. I'm going to start showing uh, TradeStation Futures Plus where I go in and I put in my order entry in my workspace. But again, I'm still using different platforms when it comes to technical trading. I'm using um, the Season Algo to find opportunities. But I'm going to show you today how I did in the boot camp, how they have a list of recommended strategies every month. That's kind of just to get you guys started. I wanted you to get, get a feel of different commodities. A lot of you guys are coming in from the standard futures market. You're coming in from trading the ES. You're trading crude oil outright. Some of you guys, even with big accounts, cannot afford to do this kind of trading. Why? Time constraints. Some of you can't be behind them. Most of you can't be behind screens. And that was my problem that I realized a long time ago when I got in. As I started getting an edge and, and learning how to be even a good technical trader from my mentor, which is a, has a, he's like a technical ninja. 
I just did not have the time. I started going and learning order flow and things like that. And I realized I don't have the time. I got to still work. I have a mortgage to pay. I got, I'm a regular human being, right? And so I knew that when I discovered this, there was, there was, this was going to work for everyone. But, um, so what we're doing with uh, season algo is we're going to go in there and we're going to start uh, those recommended strategies I was talking about is just to start, just to get a feel. You're coming in from that outright world. You haven't traded cattle before. You don't know nothing about cattle. I don't know nothing about cattle by the farming standards, and I don't really care to know. I just want to trade it and make money when I see an opportunity. Hogs, same thing. All these different kind of spreads that are out there, uh, nat gas and the different kind of energy um, commodities that are available. So I like to use that initially in the boot camp to, for you guys to inter get introduced to these commodities, get familiarized with the spread, what they are, the structure, just kind of play with it. But as you get better and you get into like a straight technical charts and stuff, we're going to get into that today. You can build and create your own strategies within season. Now go look for where volume is and find something because some of these spreads do have light volume. It's not like all the um, energy spreads that have a ton of volume and such like that. So stay tuned for that. I want to I'm going to dive into that. Um, we're going to put maybe a chart together, how I put technical charts together. Um, um, and then we'll dive in and kind of combine that with with season algo and see if there's maybe a potential confirmation right or a condition there that's going to give us high probability trading results and you guys are going to love it you got to just dive in and keep it keep it simple um so today again we're going to be going over scanning implementing putting together some charts we're going to do some technical analysis by now by looking at season algo even though we're using line charts it's, it has fundamental analysis already built in, see? So I'm not really interested in myself these, in the boot camp. I show her to access reports and do these things. Be honest with you, it's not my style. I do it because I want you to understand the nature of the beast. What's behind these things? What's running these things? The supply demand, what headline is running what? But once you know it, you can walk away and step away like I do. I don't really get into it. I use it. It's already giving you all these years of data for a reason. So there's fundamental stuff built into that. The only thing that changes things for us is uh, this geopolitics stuff. And uh, especially like this weekend, look at this. Some general gets killed somewhere. US, Iran heightens up stuff. Energy stocks go fly up. So that can ruin seasonality. I've said in videos on YouTube, guys, stay away from energy until you get a little bit experience or you have the risk adversity. You want to handle some of that um, drawdowns before you, because it changes seasonality. What else? Weather. Depending on our commodity. So you have weather, current headline news. That's about it. And then we're going to get into a little bit about TradeStation itself. They have a rebate they're offering for some of you recent students. You know, if you want to try it out, I'll put you in contact with uh, the um, advisor that's working with me over there. Um, and then he will make sure that you get commission credits every month, a percentage of it. It's, it's not going to happen probably so quick because you're not going to take as many trades with this kind of style trade. But you're going to get credits on your um, on the tuition that you paid us at Forte Trader. So at the end of the day, you're going to get that back eventually and you get it back as commission credits. And um, I'll put you in touch with those people. Let me know. Send me a message, direct message or whatever to um, so I can connect you with the right person there. Um, I'll talk to you a little bit about their fees and how the platforms I noticed work. Some kind of weird, skewy stuff that I see going on. But I noticed that also in another uh, in OEC trader. So I think it's a commonality. And I just haven't taken the time to ask, to call and ask the trade desk if it's a normal thing to see. It's at the beginning of every Sunday session and into the weekend. You see some weird things on the app going on. And I've learned to just ignore it until the market opens because... Uh, it gets skewed and it's, I don't know what they call it and why they're doing that. So I want you guys to be aware of that. And we'll just talk about a little bit more action steps that I want you guys to do to get good at this. So I can get some good feedback and be proud of you guys too. And um, anyway, so in a few minutes here, we'll go ahead and I'll, I'll lower this screen off. I'll take my ugly face away and we'll get into the desktop here and we'll start going into charts. Okay. Okay, so right now we are looking at live cattle futures. I'm using TradingView. I'm using their uh, free trial 
of their premium, their Pro Plus version so that I can have four little screens like this at any given time. One thing so far I do like about TradingView, I'll mention, and this is not a, supposed to be a review on about them guys, is um, it's web-based. And I'm starting to like the web-based stuff. I've been, I'm trading um, with Futures Plus is web-based. And the first time I tested it when everything was ready to go was on a trip in Europe several months ago. I started the last business quarter trading on Futures Plus. And um, we're up over 19% for that, wrapping up the quarter. Okay. But um, we, we, I've talked about this in that little section, technical analysis, using technicals to uh, put together a setup. This is the way my mentor taught me. This is the way that I like to keep things. It works time and time again in different markets, guys. Stocks, Forex, whatever is chartable. It works for me the best. Doesn't mean it'll work for everyone. But it works for me the best. This is uh, my highest recommend, recommended way to look at charts. And I know there's a bunch of lines and it looks ugly. But it's very, very simple. And at the end, when you get really good at this, you'll start realizing that all these little indicators that people make out there from market profiles to um, volumes and, you know, um, all these things out there for looking at order flow in different ways and retracements and fibs and all that stuff, the extensions, it all derives to try to see where the big money in the macro time frames are. Okay. Um, so we want to ideally I'm looking at four charts I want to look at my monthlies my weeklies and my daily okay no matter what it is and then I draw my support resistance lines and I'm going to use one stochastic that I'm going to talk to you guys about again that measures momentum so let me expand um, the monthly chart okay as I back away from it it's going to look really like too much you're going to go what the heck man is this but it's not commodities foreign exchanges Unlike stocks, they have pretty good moves in their macro time frames. They respect levels. And why? Because you have big money there. And big institutes are there. And so when they hit certain levels, you'll notice that they they become general support and resistance lines very well. They respect them. And so what I tend to do, you know, my mentor does it a little different. He, he uses one solid color for all time frames, but he'll make one time frame thicker than the other. So reference back a little bit to the... Uh, Section, uh, what was it, seven or so I have guys in there on technicals, I believe. But if you expand this chart out, I probably have also a lot of lines because I'm just testing TradingView and I was using, believe it or not, TOS, TD Ameritrade before for this. And um, th there's just so much, so many years in this one, I noticed, even on this free one so far. So it's like I have up till 2003 data on here. So I probably have a little bit more information that I need. You know, old levels aren't going to be as significant or important as as the latest levels of maybe five, six, seven years ago. I have more than ten plus years of that in here. So well, all I want to do, the best way to really draw lines to me and support resistance, guys, if you've heard of it at all and you've been utilizing this, okay, is the way I eliminate the wick noise in a candlestick. First of all. Just so you guys know, I'm a candlestick guy on technicals. I like using candlesticks. But the way I'm finding where the the most respected, non-noise, non-cluttery lines are, where the volume is, I mean, is I t when I'm drawing my lines, I turn right away into line uh, line charts. And when I go into the line charts, I go back as far as I can. And in this case, like I said, I have too much data on this one. And I'll draw my lines starting with blue being for the uh, monthly at every peak at every area where price turn these sharp points i draw them I, I start first with blues okay blue represents monthly um, you can use any color you like that'll work for you you can use all one color and just make them a little thicker as you get down into the like i said the lower time frames use a different color or thickness make it thinner Okay, and then what I do is I go and I just put a horizontal line all the way through the chart. I make sure that on my chart, whatever I'm using, okay, that I make it to where all my lines show up on every single chart. So I start as I start breaking down into the weeklies, get down into the daily, and then get down into my, my small time frame that I'm going to place my entry from. Okay, um, it, all the lines are there. Okay, and I can see then at that point when I'm on my smaller time frame, are we hitting a resistance or support of which time frame? 
which time frame is it going to hit or respect or bounce off of? The higher time frame it is, the more stronger and respected it is. So getting back again to the monthly, let me expand. Once I'm done doing my blue lines, and they don't have to be perfect, I'll put my candlesticks back on. Um, right there. And then I'll break it down and I'll move on into my weeklies. And I'll do the same thing. And eventually you do this, guys. You get really good and quick at it. And you save your, your platform data. So then you always have these. Okay. Anytime that price, um, what, we can use the word pivots, right? Um, same deal. Make your lines, uh, your candles into line charts. Now break it down. I'm doing red for my weeklies in my case. So sometimes what you're going to notice is, is automatically you're going to see blue lines already. Um, there right where they hit on the weekly lines where where they're i'm um, sorry where they're blank you're going to fill those in if they intercept into a weekly line and it's already there you don't have to overwrite and draw on it it's already there this is it's just confirming to you that that area is very high very strong in volume i hope this is making sense guys this is just how real and simple i do it okay so now you see i put my candles back and you start seeing these awesome awesome the respected areas you see where the noise has been filtered out with the wicks you see where some of these wicks have gone out but the bodies the lines are touching where these bodies are it's a little bit more of a high level of respected uh, areas right of price rinse and repeat rinse and repeat same thing down into the daily now in the daily on mine i use green lines so this is just what i got used to doing um here on cattle, as we get into the daily, you'll start seeing how thin the market can get. It gaps a lot. And we're going to talk about this in a little bit. <laughs> I'm not too worried about it. Um, that's not the point anyways, guys. That's why, again, turn it into a line chart. When you're drawing your areas of support resistance, and you're, you should, if you're doing this right, have less and less little areas. Just make little vague little areas. Oops. Areas that look like they're... Um, pretty uh, like they make sense where they bounced off like this in these areas only those and those are going to be the ones that are left last because the other time frames didn't get them so these are lighter time frame uh, areas of support and resistance it's all you're doing and here we just kind of broke through broke over and down through a prior one that just didn't matter okay back into the candles I don't draw lines here if they've been broken in the past. I just keep a mental note of it that I know that in the past this area has already been gone through because it's pretty obvious. Um, now you can you can make another um, you can change the line into something else if you want it to show that this area has been uh, crossed. And this is pretty cool. I could create alerts. Anyway, that wasn't my point. And that's using this one trading view, guys. Um, now. Okay, we've drawn these things. We have our support resistance lines. What else am I using? I'm only using one indicator. So see guys, I keep technical charts very simple, very simple. They look like it's too much. I don't use any other indicators except one. Down here is what you're gonna add. Make sure guys that you add your stochastic indicator. This is what I'm using. A lot of you guys are going, well, stochastic usually has two lines. Why does Peter's only have one orange thick line? That's because there's two lines, yes, a K and a D. The K is intended to be your faster line over your D. The person who originally created this, this stochastic indicator created it to measure momentum. He did not create this thing to uh, do um, oversold, overbought, like a lot of technical traders talk. We don't use this for oversold, overbought. I use this to check momentum, and I'm going to show you guys in a little bit. So what I do is make your K line a 3. Make your K line a 3. And then make your D line to where it is not on. Okay, see, I don't want a D line visible. Make it invisible, make it transparent in whatever chart you're using. That's what you need to do. K line, make it visible. I always make it in orange, the way my mentor taught me. It's just I like it. I like to mirror his charts. And then I make it nice and a little bit thicker than normal. Because some platforms it comes too thin, really thin. And so that's about it. Okay. So that all I'm doing is using a K line three stochastic. I'm going to use it to check for divergences in the strength of a move, which is basically essentially is momentum. Okay. On a technical chart, I'm looking for key support and resistance areas. I'm looking for momentum to fail 
uh, going to the downside and up to the upside. I'm looking for it to fail and and diverge in momentum over the price action. That's going to give me a pretty good indicator over a level of time, a period of time, what my probability is that uh, over a course of time, and you can see this, what my probability is that this price is going to move in the other direction. And when it does, it moves strong. That's how we're killing it. That's how we just picked up some trade, um, a current trade we're in, in Lean Hog. Stealing it this week. It was diverging. Uh, and then we picked up a good little move. And I'll show you guys that in a bit. In addition, guys, we do this for, with seasonality too, you know. So it's not... Uh, Hang on one second here. I'm going to switch around to some screen. I'll be right back. This, guys, is Season Algo. Okay. I um, think I've said enough about them in the, in the older videos. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys all have tried the free version so far. Um, if you need help with setting this up too, please, again, DM me. But this is how initially when you go into their main, their main screen, it just looks. It's a scanner. Hedge funds, fund managers, professional institute traders use tools like this. I've talked to American-based companies. This one is a company based in uh, Czech Republic where my wife is from. These guys are really good at what they do. They've been doing it for a long time and it's affordable. That's why I use it. There's a couple American companies I've spoken to out here and it's like three, four hundred bucks a month for tools like this. That's why I kind of went through these people. I was just trying to build a more personal rapport with them. So far, I haven't had any luck. It doesn't matter. I just pay the bill, you know, and I use it. The tool is very important. And they they know that. They know they're also the most affordable. You know, right now, it's the dollar is like 23 to 1 in, in Czech Republic. They're still making a killing right now of charging, what, it's like 45 bucks on average this thing a month. You can get it as low as 33 if you prepay for the whole year. But it's a scanner. Fund managers use this. Professional institutes, they use stuff like this just to pick up data so they're not constantly backtesting. This fundamental analytical tools backtest spread trades or multi-leg trades beyond two legs that I don't even really do myself up to like 60 years worth of data um, depending on the commodity or whatever. And so we're simply using this to find opportunities, build opportunities, get a little bit creative and build opportunity ourselves, go into our trading platform and put on a trade and then just sit back and wait and monitor it. Maybe five minutes a day, half an hour a week, whatever you wish. I do it daily. I like to watch my money, uh, but I try not to get into it too long. Under strategies in the videos I've showed you, you can start off with the recommended strategies recommend. They're going to give you monthly recommendations here. And I always will filter for two leg spreads here and risk to reward greater than two to start. Then I'll break down and I'll look at them and I'll, and it doesn't mean I'll just pick any one, but this is how I started. Now I get a little bit more creative. So what we're going to do is let's say analyze and we're going to go to builder. And we were just looking at live cattle. So let's say I just start typing LE. They have a really good system back here, guys. You can pick it by the outright and look at what the outright's done historically, or come on in here and pick up a cattle cattle under spread. These other stuff, they're inner commodity, they're a little bit more advanced, guys. I'd stay away from them. You don't need this information right now to make money. We just want to deal with their typical calendar spreads from the same commodity to the same commodity right now, just on different time. We're doing time spreads. Again, why? Reduce spend margin, hold overnight positions, make better use out of our dollar, cost basis, blah, 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 blah. We've talked about all this. Now, um, oh, with the patterns, I don't tend to go past 20. Um, I, I found that using 30 is just, it gets more noisy and it's older information, so I don't really care. Looking at it outright, it just hit build. You know, I'm just looking at this pattern, right? The black line is the current structure of where our, where our price structure is in relative to the past. So we can see that there's possible room here for a nice little run down still, although we're looking also for correlation. How many times has stuff correlated? Price correlated in the past year in December, I was waiting for price to hit back down on a technical level and it didn't. It just sat there and ran. So if you were shorting over here just because of that, even on the technical, my expectation was we had hit a little bit of a top. We weren't really that done there with that top. 
So it just would have been a stagnant trade, but you didn't hurt yourself because you got in at the top. If you use, you see, you see what I'm saying here, guys, there's all kind of stuff that's going to come out of this. You don't have to be a pro and have an ex 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 explanation to everything you're doing. If you, if you got in here and sold, you're nowhere but just stagnant trade. Big dang deal. You didn't lose anything. You probably lost a little bit of time. You can still do other trades in the meantime. But see, the, the spread was so up, the ratio was so high up there anyway, that you you, you weren't buying at least uh, or selling at the bottom. Okay, kind of a little clue there. But what I want to do as far as creativity now is I want to look, let's say, for for um, a spread on, on, on cattle. Why? Let's get back into technicals. In the technical charts, what I'm doing is I'm looking first, I'm going to start breaking down my macro time levels. This is something, guys, you can do with other markets time and time again. Time and time again. Stay out of the day trading, the small time frame charts. Look, so I'm going to break down. I'm, I'm looking at uh, a monthly chart here, okay? Let me expand this. Excuse me. What happened? My price access disappeared, of course. Let's break this back down in here. Let's refresh this thing. Stochastic indicator to me is just a momentum indicator that shows me when price is going higher and this is going lower, let's say. When we have a swing up higher, the price is higher than the past uh, swing up if the stochastic is lower it's telling me that the momentum is getting weak now we don't have really weak momentum showing too much here on the monthly but it is pointing a little bit down it's not diverged but it's hit um, a daily resistance okay we have monthly right up here so it still has room to run up a little bit up into these 130s where price has done this since 2017 cattle has been holding these areas of 130 and, and saying, nope, this is where cattle high price is, okay, since like 2017. It hasn't been as high as in the past. So it's a very high likelihood that there is a chance that when we hit up in these areas, we'd be looking for shorts, okay? Let's go down into a, a now and break it down on our weekly. This is how we're going to analyze anything. In currencies, I don't care what it is. Here we have... A pattern that's starting to show weak momentum on the weekly. Why? Our last swing up here to this swing price action up. Let me grab a. Excuse me. This is a. This charting is. No, just the platform is still new to me. Can I do it again? Okay, this is what I want you guys to see. We still recording? Yes. So you see we're here where price swings up. It hits this daily already on the weekly. We notice that momentum is getting weak on the monthly. We see here on the weekly that price has made higher moves up, but our momentum is getting weaker, right? See that? This is a divergence. So we can see that here in the near future, we have a big possible move to the downside on cattle. Pay close attention. Let's go into a daily. Now, to break a daily open, this is a very big gapper, big gapping kind of a, a commodity because of the liquidity on it too. But you see, price has been going down and the momentum is getting weaker. It's not the cleanest of all charts because this thing gaps a lot on lower time frames. Once we get into dailies, it just gaps. And this is also probably because of, let me guess, is contract changes. That's why. If you look at this on a different kind of a chart, you might not see this. But this could be. All right. So, prices are telling me, the higher time frames, that the likelihood of, of cattle going back down, because look at the areas it's hit. Oh, I'm sorry here. One second, guys. Wanted to see something, nothing impressive to brag about there. Okay, but we see on the higher time frames 
right? How price is looking like it's getting weaker. There could be another leg up. I might be waiting to see if, if we'll make another move here on the open or tomorrow. Right now, markets close. It's Sunday. Uh, we'll open here in, in central time in three hours. It's 2.05. Um, so it, if it makes this leg up, I'd be looking for a short right up around here for sure. Now, let's say, okay, I want to put that together with, with the seasonal trade. Now, and also mind you, I want to put on a spread trade. I'm not going to put on it outright. I'm not that crazy. I'm not that dangerous. Now, if I put on a spread trade, the first spread available, I come in here and I pick, okay, live cattle, and I pick February, April. Okay, and I'm looking at it. I'm not going to just hop into this darn thing, guys. Look at this thing. It tells me nothing. There's no correlation from price to where it should have been, where it's going, and look what it's possibly telling me on the shorter time frame calendar, which is February, April. Look what it's telling me that I'm going to make a death wish upon my account. And so, you know, here's where it gets a little bit tricky between technical and seasonal, and you got to really make the best decision. Okay, technical on shorter um um, calendars, more closer calendars, can make a much higher difference than a forward price about almost a year later down the road. Um, I'm going to go ahead now, let's say, and I'm going to simulate another one. Live cattle, and I'm going to break down the calendar spread for, let's say, February, June. I'm going to go beginning of the year and mid-year. I'm going to build it. And again, it's just something to, you know, isn't looking good to me, right? Now I feel uncomfortable. I see that there's a chance we're gonna go in, um, we can hit resistance levels that's respected several times before in the last few years of 130 and take a short to the downside. However, my seasonality on these front months, calendars, time spreads aren't telling me that or confirming that. So, and, and by the way, just because these line charts say they're gonna do something they don't always do, there's just the probability, and you have to start looking in a correlation. There's a lot more work we do here in the boot camp that you should be looking into, how we look for correlation, and how we can put a back test together and stuff like that. Here's a little trick I want to give you guys, if there's any takeaway. If you look at something and you say, okay, then let me look at um, live cattle, okay? Again, just the outright, and I'm going to go here to the Fab Contract front month. And I'm going to look here. Once I click on this, it's going to give me um, data that I can back test. Uh, where to go? Analyze tab and the quotes. That's where it went. If I look as far in the future as possible, you guys follow on this little cursor I have here. And you look and you see that there's already volume building here down in the uh, later months of the year in October Dece. I'd like to maybe consider that this could be a good one. You know, people are in here, they're already hedging positions in here. So what I want to do is build that. I want to build uh, V20, Z20. Okay, so I'll go back to my builder. V20. Minus L E Z for December 20. Look at this. So what we can do with this is, you know, we can wait a little bit, see this week what's going to happen. We're going to have a little pullback up, but you don't want to miss the train. Let's say you just had enough time. Click here on interactive for you guys that want to start trying to get an idea how to price these things. On time spreads, you can calculate the price with this line tool right here, this one right here. They used to have this a long time ago in a dollar symbol. Click on the line. I've showed you guys this in the boot camp. Pick a general area and run it down to, let's say, beginning of uh, November-ish. Is that where that would be there? Is this November? Let's see here. Sep September. Beginning of September. Potential to run down 2,100 points from where it is today. $2,100 per contract. It's going to tell you the points here, where it, uh, how many total points it is, five point and a quarter, and uh, hog and cattle is priced at about 400 a point, somewhere around there. It shows you your entry and exit price. So you're going for five and a quarter points, let's say. Let's just say. 
Keep that in mind. Look at the correlation here. Now, you want to backtest this thing. You can click backtest here. It's going to tell you we need dates. Specify enter exit dates. So you want to make sure that you're on a sell. Let's assume that you're going to take this today and you're going to exit this on September, what was it guys, first? It's a Tuesday. Build that. Now it's going to draw your short entry, long entry lines. Your short line here, your cover line here. We've already looked on technicals. We're pretty confident we're going to go for another run down uh, pretty soon. We don't know when it's going to be, but we can gauge a little bit, right? And if we're wrong because we're in a time spread, we can correct. We have time for correction. We're not going to have drawdowns like other people getting blown out of the sea with thousands of dollars per contract. We're not. We're taking that. We're at a top here almost. We can wait and see if we're going to hit that. I'd say let's wait till see that this week. I'm going to put this in our commentary for the week that's going to go on bar chart. And then we can see that that can happen here. We may even just miss the train completely, but we know that over the course of time, we have a long term trade on this one. This is definitely not even a swing trade. It's a lot like an investment. <laughs> oh, but it pays. It pays. But anyway, back to the back test here. And um, let's go ahead and, and build the back test. Once you click back test, now it's going to take these dates. In the last five years, 100% winners. Last 10 years, 100% winner. Up to 15 years, 87%. It's lost twice. This is not a bad risk to reward. Okay, our average loss is 420 bucks. Now, mind you, learn and see. Watch this. That what your max drawdown is per contract, and then what the average wins were per year. Over the course of 15 years, this thing's made a total profit of 10,600. This is your back test, guys. This is your shortcut. This is why we pay tools and algorithms to do this work for us. We have all of our data here. This is what fund managers do with your money, okay? And they make their 20, 30%. They're heroes for the year. They charge you a big management fee. This is so you can self-manage and be a professional yourself. This cumulative absolute return over 16 years. Look what it's showing us. Hypothetical, I'm supposed to say, by law. Look at that. Take a stab at it. Okay, you guys out there that are trading um, $100,000 accounts, let's take a stab at 5% of your money, 5000 bucks. This is probably, this kind of uh, uh, time spread probably only costs like about 500 bucks, more or less span margin to hold one of these things. Let's say you took 10 of these suckers. Okay, it's like a, about a three to one risk to reward ratio. So do the math. You're, you're risking, a, what was it, like a, what was it, 2,100, 2,000 guys times a 10. Get 10 smack. It's like a, a three to four to one risk to reward ratio on this thing almost. And it kind of, look, look how it says it over here. So, you know, your average risk reward, best worst. You risk five to make 20. Just if you did one contract, wouldn't it be worth it for you guys? I don't know what everyone's budget is. How aggressive you are, how you play your trades. I'm here to open your mind on some new opportunities. I'm not saying what you guys, what anybody did in the past doesn't work. I'm not here to be unfair like that. Let me put my face real quick. I've taken a ton of courses in the past. I spent over 30 grand. I used to be mad at them. What my mentor taught me was they were never a waste of time. All it is is an improvement and you take a little bit of something and take a little bit of something for the future. This is just a new opportunity. This doesn't change your guys' status doing this stuff. So I want you guys, this is the whole point of my inner circle meeting today. Because I want you guys to be able to do this. Dive in, find opportunities, sit on them. Let me know how they're doing so I can feel good and proud of you. I can feel proud of myself. It makes me feel good. I can know what I need to improve on. If it's something that I cannot answer, I'm gonna go and figure it out. I'm gonna get on the phone with brokers. I have good friends in some places. Uh, for those of you, by the way, that are still gonna use OEC Trader back in there, I have a connection there at Daniel's Trading. I'm still good friends with them. It's just, I went to TradeStation. I'm looking for newer technology. And plus I was looking for incentives that's gonna help you guys um, with the cost of your, your trading school here. Um, you get rebates for that. So this this is, not going to affect your status this is going to move you it's not going to affect it in a negative way it's going to affect it in a positive way you just try it out and do it please trust me i gotta legally because we're in the finance world be careful how i promise things because of rules 
but you you get my drift if you're in here and you're watching this you know that uh, I'm not gonna steer anybody in the wrong way I do this because it's my passion I believe in it I love this stuff and yes it's it's quite boring sometimes it is boring boring but you know what um, it works and you'll find that in a lot of things in life too the journey is actually ends up being the fun part because once you're so good at it it's just too easy and so it changes and this and it gets boring because this stuff works and so it's it's like the challenge is kind of um, that instant gratification feeling it comes only like once every every four weeks every six weeks on these trades Sometimes you get you get a gift from the markets and it just comes really quick and you start looking at your technicals and then you look and compare with your season algo and you're like this is the time to get out we can talk about it another reason why we're doing this let me get rid of my face so hang on a sec guys let me see a few other things I wanted to talk about here let's get into the trade station real quick uh, the web based platform once you get in there or you hook up your account you fund your account you do your app and um, you can always get back in touch with me and we'll do like a, a session on it, but you want to log in, go to your client center. They just updated this again recently. It takes you to the older login. There's my login. I'm going to log in. Now, once you log in into your uh, client center, you're going to go down here and depending on what you have, you're going to click on this one, the trade station futures plus trading. You just click on there. It takes you to another login. Now that other login is going to end up being the actual trading technologies hub. And this is where everything is all web based. Now there's a video, like a one hour video. People asked me recently if I was going to make trading um, the videos if they're on, if they're being conducted at the boot camp through TradeStation. Unfortunately, it still is not. It's the older videos. I'm going to work on um, updating those soon here. I don't know really when, to be honest. I plan on to because we don't no longer use uh, Daniel's Trading and OEC Trader. Um, it's just the system. It's just the way you, you bring up your trade. I don't use it for the charts. I use it to look at the depth of market, to put my order in from here, or and also pull up my um, calendars on the actual setup. So if you watch their video, it will show you um, how to set this workspace up. This is the only part of their workspace I literally use. And I use it really finely. Once I get my setup ready, I've looked at my price action. I've looked at my seasonal um, test I've put it all together I have a good trade idea that I've confirmed with myself so I'm confident and because I've been doing it for a while I'm more confident there then I'll come in here and I'll just build the spread and I'll keep some of them here and then what I'll just do is it I'll go in there and this is why I love trading technologies I'm sorry basically it's TradeStation Futures Plus and it just has all these calendars ready for me to go and I'm just like hell yeah okay now all kind of little tweaks you can do to this why I don't even use their charts they don't go past dailies look at their highest time frame so as they improve that maybe I'll consider it in the future that's why I move my tools around that's why I do different things I have my platform to find scan this is my scanner I have my tr platform for looking at technicals you know to confirm my information and then I have my broker and cool and the best thing is they're all web-based so I'm accessing data making decisions web-based and putting trades on web-based this is a huge takeaway right here the guys that don't the the, the 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 guys that don't hop on board and do this kind of technology for us, guys, and I say guys because right now I only have guys. To be politically correct, I'd say guys and gals. I don't have any gals in here, but guys. And by the way, gals are really good at trading. From what I hear, I know the, the very it's a very small margin of women that for some reason is still very small why they don't get in this industry. But uh, the ones that do are are you know. They use emotions differently. They're not like us. So back to back to my point, guys. Um, this the guy the guys out there that aren't doing this stuff, that aren't hopping on board with the web trading, web-based platforms, web-based scan tools, web-based trading, they're going to be left behind the dust. This is a cloud-based world now. You know, it's pretty soon our computers here will be nothing but monitors, and we'll be logging into a hard disk space somewhere and paying for our all that stuff remotely. Okay, so I mean, this is this is good stuff. 
you know, my inner circle, guys, please comment. Give me some pulse out there. So if I wanted to put that, um, this trade, this live cattle, V20, the October versus December of these, I already have it here. It's very simple already. If you watch the video that Trade Station has to offer on setting up the Futures Plus, they only have like two videos. It, you'll literally have this setup. I use this setup. And I'll come down here and I'll find my October Dece calendar. You know, you already see that there's bids sitting up in these places here. People are, are bidding this stuff. Okay, very light here. I don't let this stuff scare me. Once the market opens to here, it'll still be pretty light. But remember, I'm following an overall trend. So when it moves, the likelihood of it moving in my direction is going to help me out. I know I showed you guys in uh, webinars and stuff, the um, crude oil spreads, how thick they are, right? Look, thicker than the average contract, single contracts they are. But some of these other ones, they look light. Again, remember, you're doing this. Here's October Dece. Boom. This is why I like their, their platform. Real simple. Here's the bid ask. Here's the bid ask. So I can put my trade in any anywhere. Now, again, it looks thin. Oh, I don't want to trade this thin market, Peter. But, you know, the outright itself, it's not that thin. It's traded already how much? Over 157,000 contracts for the month of February. Open interest. These are all open interest. These are people hedging. These are producers, all kinds of people. There's volume enough in here for you to make money and not get whipped around. Here's a spread matrix, by the way. If you guys are into using any of that, TradeStation offers that all too. They have everything in here. Um, where's the spread matrix? I have one in, actually on here somewhere. Where is it at? Spread matrix right here. I won't use it. I just come in here and put in my orders. I'll keep spreads that I recently did in here that are popular ones that I take. I'll just save them in here. I'll make sure I saved it and I'll take off. I'm done. I watched it then after that. There's a mobile app, guys, and I just monitor them. And sometimes you guys see me snapshotting. You see me snapshotting these things and sending them your way. Okay, so um, the only other thing that's a little bit odd on this, guys, the fees. I mean, the um, when you go into the weekend, your account starts looking all weird. It'll say invalid, and they just turn everything like, like off. It's not just them. I noticed that uh, Daniel Trading was doing it too from the Gain Capital. So it's it's something probably relative to the spread itself. Sunday, right before the market opens, you'll see this ridiculous amount of money, and you're like, whoa, I'm up like three grand on a $200 spread. Well, as soon as the market opens at 5 o'clock Central, it fixes itself. So get used to it because it's been several years now for me, and it's, just, it's I'm used to it between two different brokers already. It's little skews. I haven't gotten the right information on why it does that. I haven't asked anybody. I've kind of just learned to live with it. So don't let that make you panic once you guys get to that level. I hope I see you guys at that level. And um, fees, I wanted to talk to you about that. Their commissions are pretty cheap here. Um, it's like $1.50 um, per contract plus fees. And then you have two contracts. So you're on average, um, eat one way on a spread is like seven fifty, seven dollar $7.12, something like that. Round trip, you're around 15 buck. I was paying double. At Daniel's trading you know kind of difference there is you get experienced guys there it's a boutique store then I want you guys to consider you know if you want to use them you can pay more in commission but if you're okay with that I have resources there to hook you up with those guys too I don't have anything against anybody um, I do have things against some BS people out there my my goal my my intent here is, is to help everybody out and have fun in doing it um, I, I just, here's what I want. I'd like to see everybody take some action. Let's see if I can get this back up here. There we go. I like to see everybody take some action. Uh, again, this is not gonna, this is not gonna, uh, um, 
this won't be to your advantage. It's not going to little your status. It's going to make you, uh, the guys that want to just add to your portfolio or just do only this, it just, you know, add it to your other stuff. I work on different things with my mentor. We have different projects we're working on in different markets using the technical rules only. We don't use anything else. That's his rule. Um, but, you know, um, so whether it's the only thing you do or you're adding it into your portfolio, please. Let me know how you're doing with it, and if I can help you in any way. I hope that this inner circle meeting has been uh, helpful, that you got a few things take away out of it. I want you to see value in what we're doing. Um, just a quick comment, guys. Like, I appreciate the business, but this is not like a, I'm not looking for a donation, like give me the money and you guys disappear. I don't want to see that kind of level of business. I don't want that conducted around me or my life or anyone around me and my family to run businesses like this. We want to run them successfully and see and interact with customer and make sure everybody is happy and that every, uh, you know, any concern that we can help. Okay. That's what makes a business feel good and successful. Otherwise I'm not interested. Price point wise, I've had a lot of mentors tell me this thing should be way more expensive. Um, I, I just feel that if I can, Spread this out to the masses. I'd rather charge less. There's more than enough money to go around in this world. I don't need it all. I'm doing fine alone with my trades. It's where my, my main, main passion is. If I could just only do this, I'd just rather just trade and go hide. But uh, it's my dog going off there. But I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this inner circle meeting, guys. I hope you really, really had some good takeaways from it. Please uh, get in touch with me soon. I'll see you guys out in the Facebook group. I'm going to be launching this video. If you're watching this video, it's been launched. I'm going to go edit it real quick before Central Time Market opens. And uh, shoot, what else did I want to add in there? I think I've covered mostly everything. If you have any questions, add the questions here in the, uh, in the Facebook group, in the inner circle. Okay, There's still a few people missing. I've put in requests for them to come in the group. I don't see them in there. Um, Anyway, let me know what I can do to help you guys out. Have a good week. We'll see you guys out there in, in the trading world, okay?